The house was then abandoned and condemned to lie empty, left wholly to that spectre. But it was put up for sale in case anyone unaware of that monstrous evil wished to buy or to rent it. The philosopher Athenodorus visited Athens. He read the advertisement, and on hearing the price, he was suspicious because it was so cheap. So on making inquiries, he learned the whole story, and in spite of it, or rather all the more because of it, he rented the house. When the day began to draw in, he ordered a couch to be laid for him in the front of the house. He asked for tablets, a pen and a lamp, and consigned all his servants to the inner part of the house. He concentrated his brain and eyes and hand upon his writing, for fear that, if his mind was unoccupied, he would imagine the presence of the apparitions which he'd heard of, and arouse in himself empty fears. At first, the night was as silent there as elsewhere, but then there was the clank of metal and the movement of chains. The philosopher did not raise his eyes or abandon his pen but he fortified his mind and stopped his ears. Then the noise intensified and drew nearer. Now it was audible at the threshold, now within the threshold. He looked back and saw and recognised the spectre as it had been described to him. It stood there, signalling with a finger as though summoning him. In response, he gestured with his hand that it should wait a little, and again, bent over his tablets and his pen. The wraith rattled its chains over his head as he wrote. He again looked back at the ghost, which was signalling as before, and without lingering, he picked up his lamp and followed. The spectre proceeded with heavy steps, as though burdened with its chains. After diverging into the courtyard of the house, it suddenly glided away and left him as he was accompanying it. Now left alone, he plucked some plants and leaves and marked the spot with them. Next day, he approached the magistrates, advising them to bid the place to be dug up. Bones were unearthed there, encircled and entwined with chains. The corpse had rotted with its time in the earth and had left the bones uncovered and worn away with the chains. They were gathered and buried at public expense. Thereafter, the house was free of the shades, which had been duly buried.